Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, folks, this is exactly what I've been talking about for a very long time now. If left wing arguments and stances are as strong as they claim they are, irrefutable, fundamental, moral arguments that if you're against, then you're an extremist right wing crazy person, then why is it that their arguments always resort to very fringe outlier cases? And why is it that if they're on the right side of history and they're so compassionate, the narrative is that left-wingers and Democrats are compassionate liberals that care about people and their policies reflect that, while Republicans, conservatives, are selfish sociopaths? Then why is it, when it really comes down to it, they have the most uncompassionate, absurd, selfish stances and arguments that just make your stomach turn? And man, do I have the perfect example for you, Anna Navarro, fake Republican. Republican Latina Anna Navarro, who's really just a Democrat, playing a role on CNN and of course a co-host on The View, well in her outrage after the SCOTUS Roe v. Wade decision, she made a statement that is so stomach-turning, so devoid of feeling sympathy and compassion, that even a left-wing CNN contributor, S.C. Cub, absolutely slammed her for taking this stance. But folks, it shows the whole picture here. The narrative of the compassionate, tolerant left doesn't exist. Let me show you guys what's going on. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so take a look at this. CNN contributors clash as SC Cup shreds Anna Navarro for her specific medical procedure comments. When it comes to reasons for keeping that specific medical procedure legal, some of its advocates have absolutely ghoulish reasoning. CNN contributor and co-host of the ABC daytime talk show The View, Anna Navarro, had a strip torn off by her fellow CNN contributor, SC Cub, after she cited disabled children as the reason to to keep abortion legal. Just take a look at this. The, uh, the, the mother okay. before, during, and after yep. the child. And I am not anybody to tell you what you need to do with your life or with your uterus. And because I have a family with a lot of special needs kids. I have a brother who's 57 and has the mental and motor skills of a one-year-old. And I know what that means financially, emotionally, physically for a family. And I know not all families can do it. And I have a step-granddaughter who was born with Down syndrome. And you know what? It is very difficult in Florida to get services. It is not as easy as it sounds on paper. And I've got another, another step-grandson who is uh, very autistic, who has autism, and it is incredible. And, I, and their mothers and, and people who are in that society, who are in that community, will tell you that they considered suicide because that's how difficult it is to get help because that's how lonely they feel, because they can't get other jobs, because they have financial issues, because the care that they're able to give their other children suffers. And so why can I be Catholic and still think this is a wrong decision? Because I'm American. I'm Catholic inside the church. I'm Catholic when it comes to me. But there's a lot of Americans who are not Catholic and are not Christian and are not Baptist. And you have no damn right to tell them what they should do with their bodies. Nobody does. And the perfect word was used by the conservative brief here, ghoulish. In a previous video I recorded, which is actually a little bit late thanks to YouTube, they're taking forever to reveal it. But in that video, I've also used the word barbaric, and that's what this stuff is. A total disregard for life, a lack of compassion, nothing but selfishness. And again, if their argument was so strong, then why would they ever have to make these fringe extreme points if they're so clearly on the right side of the argument? And it just goes to show that all of their arguments arguments in relation to this specific medical procedure are based in pure selfishness, greed, and pure convenience. I don't want to have to deal with a difficult circumstance. I don't want to have to deal with financial troubles. Most importantly, I don't want to have to deal with my poor decision-making skills. Therefore, I should have the constitutional right to snuff out life. The word despicable doesn't even begin to describe it. It's beyond any of that. And you know you're looking like a ghoul and your argument's bad when your left-wing co-worker at CNN releases a personal public statement on their Twitter absolutely slamming you. We all know who S.E. Cup is, of course. Take a look at what she had to say in response to Anna Navarro. It's taken me a minute to decide whether I wanted to share this, but ultimately, I felt like I had to. Yesterday, Anna Navarro, you made an argument that one of the reasons you were pro-choice was because you knew children with special needs in your family. Well, so do I. You said you have a step-granddaughter with Down syndrome and a step-grandson who is very autistic, and that there are mothers and people 
people who are in that society or in the community that will tell you that they've considered taking their own lives because that's how difficult it is to get help. As he cup then continues, I have an autistic child. I have never met a parent of an autistic child or any parent of a special needs child who said they'd wish that they'd aborted him or her. These children face enough stigmas and challenges. Please don't use our incredible, special, wonderful, superhero kids to make political arguments, especially about the benefits of abortion. I have been clear, I don't want Roe overturned. But don't even for a second make it about our special needs kids. Not even one second. Make the argument that you don't want to have a kid. Don't make the argument that you don't want to have a kind of kid that we have and love. She's totally right. I mean, think about how selfish it is. I don't want to have a special needs child. Therefore, I'm going to take its life because I don't want to deal with that. Me, 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 me is at the core of all of their arguments. Because in the end, that's what this whole thing is. And we know that based on statistics. We know that based on the stats. You know, the original argument and a much more palatable stance actually comes from Joe Biden's a clip that I keep playing. Let's play it again. I, I do not view abortion as a, uh, um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy. And I think that uh, it should be uh, rare and safe. And I think we should be focusing on how to limit the number of abortions. And they ought to be able to have a common ground and consensus as to do that. It should be safe, rare, and only used in extreme circumstances. That's a stance that makes a whole lot more sense. And I think for the most part, this idea of 70% of the population when polled supporting this particular medical procedure are not wanting Roe v. Wade to be overturned. Most of those people probably share a similar stance to this. But the current feminist stance and the current perspective that this procedure should be used without limits on demand until birth as contraception has gotten completely out of hand. And again, it's all me, me, me. Nothing but a selfish stance. Look at the stats. In 2004, the Guttmacher Institute anonymously surveyed 1,209 post abortive women from nine different clinics across the country. Of the women surveyed, 957 provided a main reason for having the procedure. This table lists each reason and the percentage of respondents who chose it. Again, the most common outlier argument that we keep seeing from the left is not even 1% of cases. And around 90% of the time, it's a purely selfish reason or a matter of convenience. What we are witnessing is a symptom of the fall of Western civilization, or at least the culture that made Western civilization great in the first place. The question is, as a society, what are we willing to accept? It seems our standards get lower and lower and lower. We've lost a sense of morality as we continue to go further and further into greed and selfishness and depravity. I never thought I'd be saying those words because in my younger years, I thought the exact opposite. But the more the evidence starts to pile up, the more you realize that we're losing our value system. The concept of family and family tradition is dying. Loyalty is dying. The preservation of childhood innocence is dying. And we've come to a point where even human life is viewed as trivial. It's almost like it's evidence of a dying society. If you don't have community standards and values, then what do you have? Hedonism and selfishness, purely the pursuit of pleasure, which leads to nothing but death and destruction. And it's all connected, folks. The moment we started to let go of traditional family values and important moral values and moral virtues is the moment the entertainment industry started to embrace complete depravity and it's gotten into our kids' minds. And just look what's happening to the next generation and youth in general. Look at youth culture and all the dysfunctional relationships and the crime. There's no way it's a coincidence. You know, left-wingers are making the argument that their daughters are going to grow up with less rights than they did. You know, there's this left-wing talking point that we keep seeing everywhere that what a travesty it is that my daughters are going to grow up with less rights than I did. I don't want to get into why I think it's a ridiculous statement to begin with, but what I do want to say is I'm less concerned about that talking point and more concerned about my children growing up in a more depraved society and more dysfunctional society than I grew up in. And unfortunately, that's happening. A society where one's selfish desires come above family and community. You know, I'm getting to a point where in the next couple of years, I'm most likely going to be a father. And I think open on-demand access to this particular medical procedure that lefties are so angry about is probably the least of my concerns. It's not even really something I'm thinking about, but this depraved, hedonistic, selfish, crime-ridden society is something that keeps me up at night. Anyways, kind of a tangent, kind of a rant, but hopefully you guys get where I'm coming from. That's what I got for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.